Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful, and a little lonely. <laughs> Water, Doc. It's hot. Thank you, Sarah. Put it down on that chair. Doc? Yeah? Doc, you can heal him, can't you? You can make him live. He's bad hurt, Sarah. Awful bad hurt. But he's so young. Don't that help, being young? Bullets are no respecters of age. I could have seen him sooner, maybe. They sent him home like that, Doc. My boy, tied to the back of his horse like a butchered hog. Hand me that cloth, sir. Here it is. They was brutal, whoever they was. You don't know? He never said who he was seeing. But I know why they shot him. Oh? Why? Because he was through with them. He told him he wasn't going to ride with them no more. Mm. Oh, Lemmy, Lemmy. Uh, ah, there's the bullet. He's coming too, Doc. Uh, Lemmy. Lem, who did this to you? Uh, uh, Tell me, Lemmy. Don't be afraid. Tell me who hurt you. Uh, well... Oh, I can't see. Try, let me get... Try to speak. Who shot you? Uh, uh, uh. He's gone, Sarah. I'm sorry. Oh, Doc. Maybe if you hadn't been at him so... Sarah, if you know I wouldn't hurt your boy, I've known him since he was a child. But we should know who did this terrible thing. They should be made to pay. There's no paying for Lemmy. I know, Sarah. I know. But someone's got the answer for it. Think now, are you sure you don't know who did it? No, Doc, I, I swear I don't. This is one thing Lemmy didn't talk about. And I know he wasn't proud of it, I know that. And he went to them this morning to call it quits? That's what he said. He told me. He told me I wouldn't have to worry about his riding off no more. Oh, there, sir. There, there. <laughs> You've just got to believe that he's all right now. Oh, let me. Let me. Well, I'll, I'll arrange things in town, sir. I'll be back in a little while. Will you be all right until then? Yes, Doc. I'll be all right. Doc, will you sit down? It isn't going to help you any to tramp back and forth across the floor all day long. I guess you're right, but I tell you, man, it was terrible. Doesn't sound very pretty. <sighs> Shot in the back and sent home tied to his horse. Young boy like that. You think his mother was telling the truth about not knowing anything about it? Yes, man, I do. The boy was evidently trying to get out of some kind of trouble. You think he'd been mixed up in something? Yes, that's the way it looks to me. 
He wasn't really a bad boy, and I figure when he found out what he was in for, he wanted no part of it. And whoever it was, he killed him to keep him quiet. I think that was it, man. Seems funny, though, that uh, I'd send him home then. Uh, well, whoever it was thought he was dead. There was barely a sign of life in him when I got to him. Yeah. He might have been sent home as a warning to his mother. In case she did know anything. Yeah, you could be right. I'd give a lot to know who did that. Well, I'll ride on out there this afternoon, Doc. Yeah, whoever it was, it'll be hard to trace, though, with the boy not saying a word. Well, I suppose so. I was... Wish that... Uh... Say, Matt. Yeah, Doc? How would it be, do you suppose, if the killer thought the boy did talk? Huh? What do you mean? Uh, I mean... Suppose word got around that the boy had talked to me, that I that I know who the killer is. Uh, you'd be a bigger target than a buffalo. Well, no, I think that... Now, you're thinking crazy, Doc. If the killer got the idea that you know anything, your life wouldn't be worth a nickel. It'd flush them out, wouldn't it, Matt? Well, maybe it would, but if they thought that you knew about it, they'd kill you. Yeah, but maybe it's now, you listen to me, to... Doc. This is my business. You stick to trying to keep folks alive. You let me take care of the other. Well, I'd sure like to take care of this one. Just forget it, Doc. You've already done all you could for Lemmy and his mother. Now, I'll ride out there. Mr. Dillon? Oh, hello, Doc. Hello, Chester. Uh, Mr. Dillon, there's been a killing out to the woods place. Yeah, Chester, I know. Doc was there when the boy died. Oh. Well, that's a shame, Doc. A nice boy like that. It's a terrible shame. How'd you find out about it, Chester? Well, I was passing by Mr. Jonas' store, and I heard about it. I ordered the coffin there, Matt. Oh, I see. Matt? I don't think you'll find much to go on out at the woods place. I looked around, but there weren't any unusual tracks. You was doing some tracking? Well, I may not be a bloodhound like you are, Chester, but I can read some. Uh, it's all right, Doc. All right, get my horse, will you, Chester? Yes, sir. Uh, Doc, you, uh... You, you want to come with me? No, Matt, thank you. I've been there twice today. You tell Sarah I'll drop by to see her tomorrow. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, Doc. Yes, Matt? Now, don't you get any fancy ideas about making up a story. We'll... We'll get this man. He'll make a mistake. They all do. I just hope I'm around when he does. Killing since I came to this misbegotten town, but I do believe this is the worst. Sounds awful, Doc, shooting the boy in the back. That poor kid didn't even have no chance to see who done it. Oh, he saw who did it, all right. Oh, yes, yes. He knew who killed him. I thought you said he was already out when you got to him. Well, he was, yes. He was. Uh, but he roused himself just before he died. Enough to say a few words. And you heard him, Doc? I heard him, all right. Well, who done it then? Not, not so fast. Oh, not so fast. I'll do my talking at the proper time and not before. Seems to me you're doing an awful lot of talking right now. Yeah. Oh, uh, hello, kid. He's telling us he knows who killed the woods boy. Well, that's so? Why don't you come over to my table, Doc, and talk to me for a while, huh? Yeah, well, yeah, it's all right, all right, kid. You bet. Sam, another round of beer over, over here. Yeah. Uh, I'll see you later. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure, Doc. <laughs> yeah. All right, Kitty. Now, Doc Adams, what are you up to? Well, I'm just... Just have a beer, Kitty. You, you've seen me drink beer before. I never seen you buy it for the whole crowd before. Well, I here I, we I, are. I, now sit down, Doc. Yeah. Now, thank you, Kitty. And you were gossiping like an old woman, bending the ear of anybody in the place that listen. Well, there's there always a lot of talk about a killing. A killing isn't usually your favorite kind of talk. Is it true you know who killed the boy? Well, oh well, yes, Kitty. I was there when Lemmy died. Does Matt know this? Well, not exactly. Does Matt know that you're spreading the word around that you know who the killer is? No, Kitty, he doesn't. No, I'll bet he doesn't. Are you trying to get yourself killed, Doc? Oh, now, stop worrying about it. This is a man's work. You mean you're doing this on purpose? Now, Kitty, you listen to me. I'm not anxious to get myself hurt. But whoever did this must be brought in. 
So you've been telling this story all over town. What's the best way I know? Flushing them out. He'll kill you, Doc. Sure as you're sitting here. Well, then we'd know who did it, wouldn't we? Doc, you're a stubborn old fool. I just hope you get a chance to grow older. Adams, ain't you? That's who I am, son. Well, I'm supposed to fetch you out to the Widow Woods place. Oh. Something wrong, Miss Sarah? Reckon so. You're supposed to come. Sarah sent you, did she? Well, you're supposed to come because she's sick. I see. Well, now you just wait here a minute while I get my bag and you can ride out there with me in the buggy. No, thanks, Doc. I'd, I'd rather go home by the creek. I don't want to ride with you. Oh, all right, son. Yes, all right, Perhaps I'd better go alone at that. Okay. Well, so long, Doc. Why, Jing, you woman's work sweeping and dusting and keeping things in order. Ain't that so much you don't? What? What's that, Chester? I say, ain't redding up a woman's job. Well, you have to find the woman first. Well, I wasn't cut out for it, I can tell you that. Seems to me a man ought to stick to what he is cut out for. <coughs> you you take old Doc now. He'd sure be better off he'd stick to his life. Yeah. You ain't been down the street this morning, have you, Mr. Jones? No, Chester. I've been trying to get through this pile of stuff that came in the mail, and I'm still trying... Well, it's just a caution. That old busybody's been covering the town, telling his story about the way the woods boy got killed. Uh, what's that, Chester? Yeah. Will you put that broom down? Yeah. <coughs> oh, my. Now, what were you saying? Well, I... I was telling you about... How Doc should ought to stick to his own business, Mr. Jones. Yeah. Bragging around about how much he knows about the shooting. I, I, I tell you, he ain't missed nobody in the saloon that the livery stable knows. You mean he's saying he knows who killed Lemmy? That's what he's been saying ever since it happened. I thought you told him to keep his mouth shut. I did, Chester, and I guess I better go tell him again. Well, he ain't up to his office. You know where he went? Yes, sir, I do. I seen the whole thing. Ragtail boy come in a little bit ago and fetched him out to the Widow Woods. How do you know that? Well, because the kid come flying down the stairs from Doc's office looking like somebody was after him, and I grabbed him. I thought he might have stole something. Well, well, go on, Chester. What did the boys say? Well, he just said they sent him to get Doc out of the Widow Woods, as that's all. Then I seen Doc drive off in his buggy. Come on, let's get our horses. What? Looks like Doc talked himself into a trap. Come on. Yet. Bring it over here. I'm fixing to. Splash some milk in the mine. You just keep looking out that window, Roop. Doc Adams will be just be getting here. It'll do you no good when he does come. Not alive, maybe. Do us plenty good dead. We'll make him forget what he knows about us mighty quick. He don't know anything, I tell you, not anything at all. Well, that ain't what he says. Bragging all over Dodger, he knows about us. Well, I was here, wasn't I? I was here the whole time, every minute after you sent my Lemmy home, and he, he didn't say anything, I tell you. Oh, he tried, Lemmy did. He tried, but he couldn't. He, he couldn't speak. You butchered him up too bad. Shut her up, Mort. She makes me feel crawly. It's as soon as Doc Adams walks in here. Hey, here he comes. Mort, there's his buggy. Stay low now till he gets in here. Hey, you heard her shout. He's heading for the barn. Come on, we got to get him sure. Hey, that woman, she won't cause no trouble, Mort. I hit her a good knock. Here's the buggy. Uh, 
Come on. Let's go in after him. All right. Inside now. He's mighty quiet. We get him. I'll go down the stalls this side. You stay here. Keep your eyes open. Maybe he ain't got a gun. I don't think he's that crazy. You cover me now. Okay. Uh, ain't in this stall. Neither. Mort. It, hmm? Mort. He's in the law. I seen something moving up there. You get a rope. He ain't shooting back. Oh, he sure ain't. Maybe he hasn't got a gun up there. Or maybe you hit him. He could be trying to fool us. He ain't got that kind of time. I'm going to go up after him. You shoot anything that moves. All right, drop your gun. It's a marshal. Get it. They're both down, Mr. Dillon. That big and fell off the ladder. Go over and get his gun, Chester. This one's dead. Yes, sir. He's dead, too, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Doc. Doc, you all right? Well, certainly I'm all right. Well, come on down, then. Glad you, Matt. Glad you. Not too comfortable up there. Now, where's your gun? Uh, well, uh, to tell you the truth, man, uh, I guess I must have left it in the buggy. Well, if that don't just beat all, you make your brags around town to get yourself in a fix. We have to come all this way out here to save you, and then you don't even carry a gun. Of course, it probably uh, don't make no difference. You couldn't hit the broadside of a barn anyhow. Uh, but, well, I got to see Sarah, Matt. She, she tried to warn me. They, they may have hurt her. All right, Doc. Well, that's better. It's about time you start doing what you're supposed to do, taking care of folks, instead of kiting off on a wild goose chase. Yes, well, maybe you're right, Chester, but it... Uh, it wasn't exactly a wild goose chase, no, was it? No, Doc, I, I guess it wasn't. Yeah, well, explain that to Chester, will you? I got work to do. Well, I'll say one thing, Mr. Dillon. Doc maybe wasn't too smart about the way he handled things, but he sure has got heart. Yeah, he sure does, Chester. The old Doc's got a lot of heart. Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Helen Clee, Irene Anders, and Sam Edwards. Farley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke. This is the CBS Radio Network.